Hi there and welcome to learn A-level biology for free with Ms Estrick. In this video I'm going to be going through the AQA required practical which is the chlorophyll chromatography one. So first of all just to go through what the aim of this particular required practical is, is to look at the technique of chromatography as a way to investigate the different pigments that you find in different species of leaves. And I've just got an example here of a chromatogram that is complete, where you can see all of these different coloured pigments. So although the leaf might only look one particular shade of green, it's actually made up of a combination of different pigments. And that takes us to this background information about it. So chlorophyll is typically five closely related pigments. And if you haven't already watched my video on chlorophyll, I'll link up here so you can find out a full background rather than just this summary. So typically you might have these five different pigments and each of these pigments absorbs a different wavelength of light and therefore it reflects a different wavelength of light. And that's why they all appear a different color. Now, the advantage of having this combination of pigments is that each one, as we said, absorbs a different wavelength of light and therefore you get the maximum amount of light energy being absorbed. And different plants will have different combinations of pigments and that is dependent on the environment they are in because certain environments will be emitting slightly different wavelengths of visible light. So the hypothesis in this required practical, you might find that you're asked to compare the pigments in two different species of leaves. So our hypothesis would be the combination of pigments and you might be looking at proportion. I'm just going to focus on the pigments itself today. Um, it will differ in the plants depending on their environment. So you might be familiar that some leaves might be more red or purple. Or it might be, instead of being reddy and purple, they can be more yellow or a more bluey green colour. So the method that you have to use, number one, you have to be able to extract the pigment from the leaf that you are sampling. And this could either be by just taking the leaf itself and a glass rod and just crushing the leaf onto the chromatography paper. Or if you are going to be following the TLC method, you might then have to crush the leaf in a particular solvent so you then have the pigment suspended in that solvent so it's as a liquid. The next step is whichever type of chromatography you're doing, your paper that you're going to be using, you need to draw a pencil line which will be called the origin line on your chromatography paper about five millimeters higher than the level of the solvent. And that's so that the solvent is below the pigment dot to start with, so it doesn't dissolve it and just wash it off the paper. Then we can start adding our extracted pigment to the very, very middle of your origin line. And that might be directly you were crushing the leaf with a glass rod onto the origin line. Or if you did make this pigment suspension, then you might be using the tip of a plastic pipette, for example, to take small, small volumes over to your paper, placing it gently on top, so you get a very, very small droplet. Whichever method you go for, you'd have to let that drop completely dry, and then repeat this over and over because you need to have enough pigment on your chromatography paper that when the pigments do dissolve and separate, they are visible. So approximately, you might need to make your dot about three to five millimeters in diameter. And by the time it's that large, you should have enough pigment. Then once that is fully dry, you will place your chromatography paper or TLC paper into whatever container you're using to hold the solvent and your chromatography paper. But the key thing is you need to make sure that the solvent is just below your origin line and your pigment dot and that the paper is vertically straight, not touching the walls. And that's so that the pigments do run straight up the paper if it is at an angle they'll end up going up 
sideways and they might just run off the end of the paper and then you won't be able to take your measurements later. So you leave this then for the solvent to absorb into the chromatography or TLC paper and it will absorb and move up and as it does that it will dissolve the pigments and whichever pigments are more soluble are going to move further up the paper. And when the solvent is approximately two millimetres from the top, use forceps to remove your chromatography paper. And you should be using forceps rather than your fingers for your health and safety, but also so the grease from your fingers doesn't contaminate your chromatogram. So you should end up with something like this. You can see your origin line. You can see where you had your pigment originally. And then the solvent, because it dissolved those pigments, the pigments have moved up. This is TLC, this paper. Moved up the TLC paper, and you can see how all of those pigments have separated. Now, as soon as you take your TLC paper or chromatography paper out, you must draw on a line where the solvent is. And the reason for that is when you take it out straight away, it's quite clear where the solvent has gone up to because the paper looks wet. But the solvent will evaporate very, very quickly. And as soon as it's evaporated, you'll no longer know where the solvent front, which is the end point, is. And you need that piece of information for the calculation we're going to be doing. So it's essential that you do that. Sometimes, now this one's not essential, but sometimes you might be recommended as well to draw a circle or just draw around the outline of each pigment mark because the pigments themselves, the colour does fade with time, particularly some of these grey coloured ones, as you can see here, here and here, that colour will fade quite quickly and then you won't have the data to collect. So then we will calculate the RF values, which we'll come to in a minute. And if you are comparing two different leaves, you would then repeat that entire method for your second leaf. So RF values, which stands for retention factor. This is the way that we identify which pigments are present. Because you could take a guess based on the colour. You might be looking at the yellows and think, well, they're yellow, so it's xanthophyll. These are grey, it's phaophytin. We've got this one here, which is probably chlorophyll B. This one's more a bluey green, so chlorophyll A. However, you need to standardise this by actually using an RF value. And the RF value is calculated this way. So it's a distance moved by the pigment divided by the distance moved by the solvent. So for example, I've picked out this yellow pigment here to demonstrate you would need to use your ruler to measure right from the middle of your pigment original um, dot and then up to the middle of the pigment of interest. And we measure from the middle because the pigment is normally quite spread out. So as a way to standardise your measurements, so it's a fair comparison every time, we always measure from the middle of where the pigment has move to. So that would be our distance moved by the pigment. You also need to measure the distance moved by the solvent. So we measure starting from our origin line up to what we call the solvent front, which is the pencil line you drew on to indicate where the solvent finished. Now the RF values, the reason we use these instead of just looking at the colours is the RF value for each pigment will be constant, assuming you're using the same solvent. And the reason for that is each of these pigments has a particular solubility in each solvent. And based on how soluble it is, that is what determines how far it travels up. So you should then be able to look up a database of RF values, look at your calculated answers compared to the database, and then you can record down which pigments you think you have. So once you've done that for your first leaf, you would then do exactly that same method again for your second leaf, and you can then compare whether you think you do or do not have the same pigments in those two leaves. And that's what would take you to the conclusion. So comparing your two chromatograms and the RF values to see 
Do different plant species from different environments contain the same pigments or not? And if they don't, that's something you can start to consider why that might be. So it might be to do with canopy cover, it might be to do with the duration of light, it might be to do with um, where the light's reflecting off, creating different wavelengths of light that are available, and therefore the plant's adapted to have pigments um, that can adapt, absorb those wavelengths better. So some exam questions that have come up in the past linked to this required practical. So we've got number one, why must the origin line be drawn in pencil, not pen? We've got why should you measure the RF value from the middle of the pigment mark? Why should you draw a line where the solvent reached immediately after you've taken your paper out? So why do you draw a line at the solvent front? And why should you make sure your chromatography paper is vertical and straight when you position it in the solvent? So pause the video if you want, have a go at answering those questions. If not, I'm going to go straight on to the answers now. So the first one, it has to be pencil marks that you're making on your um, chromatography paper or TLC paper because pens contain ink and ink is pigment. So that ink would also dissolve in the solvent and it would run up your chromatography paper and interfere with your chromatogram. Number two down here, why should you draw a line where the solvent reached immediately after taking it out? That's because the solvent evaporates very, very quickly. So the end position or solvent front is not visible shortly after the experiment. So if you haven't drawn that pencil line, you won't be able to calculate your RF values. Why should you measure the RF value from the middle of the pigment? So this is the idea of why should you, when you're measuring the distance the pigment moved, why should you measure the distance the pigment moved right from the middle? And that's because the pigment mark is spread out. It's not one single precise dot. So by measuring from the middle position each time, it's a way to standardize your measurements and therefore you're allowing for these fair comparisons. Last question, why should you make sure your chromatography paper is vertical? And that is so the pigments move straight up the chromatography or TLC paper to avoid them running off the side or being washed off. And that would mean you don't have any results. So that is it for the chromatography required practical.